Part 1, The Believer's Espousals, Chapter 3, The Fruits of the Believer's Marriage with Christ, Particularly Gospel Holiness and Obedience to the Law as a Rule, Continued. Section 5, Gospel Grace Giving No Liberty Nor Freedom to Sin, But to Holy Service and Pure Obedience. The glorious husband's love can't lead the wife to whoredom or licentiousness of life. Nay, nay, she finds his warmest love within, the hottest fire to melt her heart for sin. His kind embrace is still the strongest cord to bind her to the service of her Lord. The more her faith ensures this love of his, the more his law her delectation is. Some dream they might who this assurance win, take latitude and liberty to sin. Ah, such bewray their ignorance and prove they want the lively sense of drawing love, and how its sweet constraining force can move. The ark of grace came never in to dwell, but Dagon lusts before it headlong fell. Men basely came into lasciviousness, abused the doctrine, not the work of grace. Huggers of divine love and vice's path have but the fancy of it, not the faith. They never soared aloft on grace's wing that knew not grace to be a holy thing. When regnant she the powers of hell appalls, and sin's dominion in the ruin falls. Cursed is the crew whose antinomian dress makes grace a cover to their idleness. The bride of Christ will sure be very loath to make his love a pillow for her sloth. Why, may she sin the more that grace abounds? Oh, God forbid, the very thought confounds. When dead unto the law, she's dead to sin. How can she any longer live therein? To neither of them now is she a slave, but shares the conquest of the great, the brave, the mighty general, her victorious head, who broke the double chain to free the bride. Hence, prompted now with gratitude and love, her cheerful feet and swift obedience move, more strong the cords of love to duty draw than hell and all the curses of the law. When with seraphic love the breasts inspired, by that are all the other graces fired, these kindling round the burning heart and frame in life and walk send forth a holy flame. Chapter 4 a caution to all against a legal spirit, especially to those that have a profession without power and learning without grace. Why, says the haughty heart of legalists, bound to the law of works by natural twists, why such a do about a law divorce? Men's lives are bad, and would you have them worse? Such antinomian stuff with labored toil, would human beauty's native luster spoil? What wickedness beneath the covering lurks, that lewdly would divorce us all from works? Why stir about the law and grace? We know that merit cannot now take place. And what need more? Well, to let slander drop, be merit for a little here the scope. Ah, Many learn to lisp in gospel terms, who yet embrace the law with legal arms. By wholesome education some are taught to own that human merit now is naught, who faintly but renounce proud merit's name, and cleave refinedly to the popish scheme. For graceful works expecting divine bliss, and when they fail, trust Christ for what's amiss. Thus to his righteousness profess to flee, yet by it still would their own saviors be. They seem to works of merit bloody foes, 
yet seek salvation, as it were, by those. Blind Gentiles found, who did not seek nor know, but Israel lost it whole, who sought it so. Let all that love to wear the gospel dress know that as sin, so dastard righteousness, has slain its thousands, who in towering pride the righteousness of Jesus Christ deride. A robe divinely wrought, divinely won, yet cast by men for rags that are their own. But some to legal works seem whole denied, yet would by gospel works be justified. By faith, repentance, love, and other such, these dreamers being righteous overmuch, like Uzzah, give the ark a wrongful touch, by legal deeds, however gospelized, can e'er tremendous justice be appeased? Or sinners justified before that God whose law is perfect and exceeding broad? Nay, faith itself, that leading gospel grace, holds as a work no justifying place. Just heaven to man for his righteousness imputes not faith itself, or in its acts, or fruits, but Jesus' meritorious life and death, faith's proper object, all the honor hath. From this doth faith derive its glorious fame, its great renown and justifying name, receiving all things, but deserving not, by faith's all begged and taken, nothing bought. Its highest name is from the wedding vote, so instrumental in the marriage knot. Jehovah lends the bride in that blessed hour the exceeding greatness of his mighty power, which sweetly does her heart consent command to reach the wealthy prince her naked hand. For close to his embrace she'd never stir, if first his loving arms embraced not her, but this he does by kindly, gradual chase of rousing, reaching, teaching, drawing grace. He shows her in his sweetest love address his glory as the sun of righteousness, at which all dying glories earth adorn shrink like the sick moon at the wholesome morn. This glorious sun arising with a grace dark shades of creature righteousness to chase. Faith now disclaims itself and all the train of virtues formerly accounted gain, and counts them dung with holy, meek disdain. For now appears the height, the depth immense, of divine bounty and benevolence, amazing mercy, ignorant of bounds, which most enlarged faculties confounds. How vain, how void now seem the vulgar charms, the monarch's pomp of courts and pride of arms, the boasted beauties of the human kind, the powers of body and the gifts of mind. Lo, in the grandeur of Emmanuel's train, all's swallowed up as rivers in the main. He's seen when gospel light and sight is given, encompassed round with all the pomp of heaven. The soul now taught of God sees human schools make Christless rabbis only literate fools, and that, till divine teaching powerful draw, no learning will divorce them from the law. Mere argument may clear the head and force a verbal, not a cordial, clean divorce. Hence many, taught the wholesome terms of art, have gospel heads but still a legal heart. Till sovereign grace and power the sinner catch, he takes not Jesus for his only match. Nay, works compete. Ah, true, however odd, Dead works are rival with the living God. Till heaven preventing mercy clear the sight, Confound the pride with supernatural light, No haughty soul of humankind is brought To mortify her self-exalting thought. 
yet holiest creatures in clay tents that lodge, be but their lives scanned by the dreadful judge? How shall they ere his lawful search endure, before whose purest eyes heaven is not pure? How must their black indictment be enlarged, when by him angels are with folly charged? What human worth shall stand when he shall scan? Oh, may his glory stain the pride of man! How wondrous are the tracts of divine grace! How searchless are his ways! How vast the abyss! Let haughty reason stop and fear to leap! Angelic plummets cannot sound the deep! With scorn he turns his eyes from haughty kings, with pleasure looks on low and worthless things. Deep are his judgments, sovereign is his will. Let every mortal worm be dumb, be still. In vain proud reason swells beyond its bound. God and his counsels are a gulf profound, an ocean wherein all our thoughts are drowned. Chapter 5 Arguments and encouragements to gospel ministers to avoid a legal strain of doctrine and endeavor the sinner's match with Christ by gospel means. Section 1. A Legal Spirit, the Root of Damnable Errors Ye heralds great, that blow in the name of God the silver trump of gospel grace abroad, and sound by warrant from the great I am, the nuptial treaty with a worthy lamb. Might ye but stoop the unpolished muse to brook, and from a shrub and wholesome berry pluck, ye'd take encouragement from what is said by gospel means to make the marriage bed, and to your glorious Lord a virgin chaste to wed. The more proud nature bears a legal sway, the more should preachers bend the gospel way. Oft in the church arise destructive schisms from anti-evangelic aphorisms. A legal spirit may be justly named, the fertile womb of every error damned. Hence popery, so connatural since the fall, makes legal works like saviors merit all. Yea, more than merit on their shoulder loads, to supererogate like demigods. Hence proud Socinians set their reason high, above every precious gospel mystery. Its divine author stab, and without fear, the purple covert of his chariot tear. With these run Aryan monsters in a line, all gospel truth at once to undermine. To darken and delete, like hellish foes, the brightest color of the Sharon rose. At best it's human red, they but decry, that blot the divine white, the native dye. Hence dare Arminians too, with brazen face, give man's free will the throne of God's free grace, whose self-exalting tenets clearly show great ignorance of law and gospel too. Hence neonomian spring, as sundry call, the new lawmakers to redress our fall. The law of works into repentance, faith, is changed as their Baxterian Bible saith. Shaping the gospel to an easy law, they build their tottering house with hay and straw yet hid like Rachel's idols in the stuff, their legal hand within a gospel muff. Yea, hence spring antinomian vile refuse, whose gross abettors gospel grace abuse. Unskilled how grace's silken latchet binds, her captives to the law with willing minds. Section 2 a legal strain of doctrine discovered and discarded. No wonder Paul the legal spirit curse of fatal errors such a feeding nurse. 
He, in Jehovah's great, tremendous name, condemns perverters of the gospel scheme. He damned the sophist rude, the babbling priest, would venture to corrupt it in the least. Yea, cursed the heavenly angel down to hell, that daring would another gospel tell. Which crime is charged on these that dare dispense the selfsame gospel in another sense? Christ is not preached in truth, but in disguise, if his bright glory half absconded lies. When gospel soldiers that divide the word scarce brandish any but the legal sword, while Christ, the author of the law, they press more than the end of it for righteousness. Christ, as a seeker of our service, trace more than a giver of enabling grace. The king commanding holiness they show more than the prince exalted to bestow. Yea, more on Christ the sin revenger dwell than Christ redeemer both from sin and hell. With legal spade the gospel field he delves, who thus drives sinners in unto themselves. Having the truth that should be all revealed, the sweetest part of Christ is oft concealed. We bid men turn from sin, but seldom say, Behold the Lamb that takes all sin away. Christ, by the gospel rightly understood, not only treats a peace, but makes it good. Those suitors, therefore, of the bride who hope by force to drag her with the legal rope, nor use the drawing cord of conquering grace, pursue with flaming zeal a fruitless chase. In vain lame doings urge with solemn awe to bribe the fury of the fiery law. With equal success to the fool that aims by paper walls to bound devouring flames. The laws but mocked by their most graceful deed that wed not first the law-fulfilling head. It values neither how they wrought nor wept that slight the ark wherein alone tis kept. Yet legalists do, do, with ardor press, and with preposterous zeal and warm address would seem the greatest friends to holiness. But vainly could such opposites accord respect the law, and yet reject the Lord. They show not Jesus as the way to bliss, but, Judas-like, betray him with a kiss. Of boasted works, of mere profession puffed, law boasters proving, but lawbreakers oft. Section 3 The Hurtfulness of Not Preaching Christ and Distinguishing Duly Between Law and Gospel Hell cares not how crude holiness be preached, if sinners match with Christ be never reached, knowing their holiness is but a sham, who ne'er are married to the Holy Lamb. Let words have never such a pious show, and blaze aloft in rude professor's view, with sacred aromatics richly spiced, if they but drown in silence glorious Christ or, if he may, some vacant room supply, make him a subject only by the by. They mar true holiness with tickling chat to breed a bastard pharisaic brat. They woefully the gospel message brock, make fearful havoc of their master's flock. Yet please themselves and the blind multitude by whom the gospel's little understood. Rude souls, perhaps, imagine little odds between the legal and the gospel roads, but vainly men attempt to blend the two. They differ more than Christ and Moses do. Moses evangelizing in a shade, by types the news of light approaching spread, but from the law of works by him proclaimed, 
No ray of gospel grace or mercy gleamed. By nature's light, the law to all is known, but lightsome news of gospel grace to none. The doing covenant now in part or whole is strong to damn, but weak to save a soul. It hurts and cannot help, but as it tends, through mercy to subserve some gospel ends, law thunder roughly to the gospel tames, the gospel mildly to the law reclaims. The fiery law, as tis a covenant, schools men to see the gospel aid they want. Then gospel aid does sweetly them incline back to the law, as tis a rule divine. Heaven's healing work is oft commenced with wounds. Terror begins what loving kindness crowns. Preachers may therefore press the fiery law to strike the Christless men with dreadful awe. Law threats, which for his sin to hell depress, yea, damn him for his rotten righteousness, that while he views the law exceeding broad, he fain may wed the righteousness of God. But ah, to press law works as terms of life, was ne'er the way to court the lamb a wife. To urge conditions on the legal frame is to renew the vain old covenant game. The law is good when lawfully tis used, but most destructive when it is abused. They set not duties in the proper sphere who duly law and gospel don't revere. But under massy chains let sinners die as tributaries or to do or die. Nor make the law a squaring rule of life, but in the gospel throat a bloody knife. Section 5. Damnable pride and self-righteousness, so natural to all men, has little need to be encouraged by legal preaching. The legal path proud nature loves so well, though yet tis but the cleanest road to hell, that, lo, even these that take the foulest ways, whose lewdness no controlling bridle stays, if but their drowsy conscience raise its voice, twill speak the law of works their native choice, and echo to the rousing sound, Ah, true, I cannot hope to live unless I do. No conscious breast of mortal kind can trace the mystery deep of being saved by grace. Of this nor is the natural conscience skilled, nor will admit it when it is revealed, but pushes at the gospel like a ram as proxy for the law against the lamb. The proud, self-righteous, pharisaic strain is, Blessed be God, I'm not like other men. I read and pray, give alms, I mourn and fast, and therefore hope to get to heaven at last. For though from every sin I be not free, great multitudes of men are worse than me. I'm none of those that swear, cheat, drink, and whore. Thus on the law he builds his Babel tower. Yea, even the vilest cursed debauchee will make the law of works his very plea. Why, says the rake, what take you me to be? A Turk or infidel you lie. I can't be termed so base but by a sycophant. Only I hate to act the whining saint. I am a Christian true, and therefore bode. It shall be well with me, I hope in God. Ain't I an honest man? Yea, I defy the tongue that dare assert black to mine eye. Perhaps when the reprover turns his back, he'll vend the viler wares, o's open back, and with his fellows in a strain more big, Bid damn the base, uncharitable Whig, 
These scoundrel hypocrites, he'll proudly say, think none shall ever merit heaven but they. And yet we may compete with them, for see, the best have blemishes as well as we. We have as good a heart, we trust, as these, though not their vain superfluous show and blaze. Bigoted zealots, whose full crimes are hid, would damn us all to hell, but God forbid. Whatever such a whining sect profess, tis but a nice, morose, affected dress. And though we don't profess so much as they, we hope to compass heaven a shorter way. We seek God's mercy, and are all along most free of malice, and do no man wrong. But whims fantastic shan't our heads annoy, that would our social liberties destroy. Sure, right religion never was designed to mar the native mirth of humankind. How weak are those that would be thought non-such! How mad that would be righteous over much! We have sufficient, though we be not crammed, we'll therefore hope the best. Let them be damned. Ah, horrid talk! Yet so the legal strain Lards even the language of the most profane. Thus devilish pride o'erlooks a thousand faults, And on a legal ground itself exalts. This do and live, though doing power be lost, In every mortal is proud nature's boast. How does a vain conceit of goodness dwell, And feed false hope amidst the shades of hell? Shall we, who should by gospel methods draw, Send sinners to their natural spouse the law? And harp upon the doing string to such, Who ignorantly dream they do so much? Why thus, instead of courting Christ a bride, We hardened rebels in their native pride? Much rather ought we in God's name to place His great artillery straight against their face, And throw hot Sinai thunderbolts around, To burn their towering hopes down to the ground, To make the pillars of their pride to shake, And damn their doing to the burning lake, To curse the doers unto endless thrall, That never did continue to do all to scorch their conscience with the flaming air, and sink their haughty thoughts in deep despair, denouncing evil's black revenging doom, to blast their expectation in the bloom, till once vain hope of life by works give place unto a solid hope of life by grace. The vigorous use of means is safely urged when pressing calls from legal dregs are purged, but most unsafely in a federal dress, confounding terms of life with means of grace. Oh, dangerous is the attempt, proud flesh to please, or send a sinner to the law for ease, who rather needs to feel its piercing dart, till dreadful pangs invade his trembling heart and thither only should be sent for flames of fire to burn his rotten hopes and claims, that thus disarmed he gladly may embrace and grasp with eagerness the news of grace. Section 5 The gospel of divine grace, the only means of converting sinners, and should be preached, therefore, most clearly, fully, and freely. They ought, who royal graces heralds be, To trumpet loud salvation, full and free. Nor safely can to humor mortal pride In silence evangelic mysteries hide. What heaven is pleased to give, dare we refuse, Or underground conceal, lest men abuse? Suppress the gospel flower, Upon pretense that some vile spiders may suck poison thence? Christ is a stumbling block. Shall we neglect to preach him, lest the blind should break their neck? 
that high he's for the fall of many set, as well as for the rise, must prove no let. No grain of precious truth must be suppressed, though reprobates should to their ruin rest. Shall heaven's coruscant lamp be dimmed that pays its daily tribute down in golden rays? Because some, blinded with the blazing gleams, share not the pleasure of the lightning beams. Let those be hardened, petrified, and harmed. The rest are mollified and kindly warned. A various savor, flowers and graces field, of life to some, of death to others yield. Must then the rose be veiled, the lily hid, the fragrant savor stifled? God forbid! The revelation of the gospel flower is still the organ framed of saving power. Most justly, then, are legal minds condemned, that of the glorious gospel are ashamed. For this the divine arm, and only this, the power of God unto salvation is. For therein is revealed, to screen from wrath, the righteousness of God from faith to faith. The happy change in guilty sinners' case they owe to free displays of sovereign grace, whose joyful tidings of amazing love the ministration of the Spirit prove. The glorious vent the gospel news express of God's free grace through Christ's full righteousness is heaven's gay chariot where the Spirit bides and in his conquering power triumphant rides. The gospel field is still the spirit's soil, the golden pipe that bears the holy oil, the orb where he outshines the radiant sun, the silver channel where his graces run. Within the gospel banks his flowing tide of lightning, quickening motion sweetly glide. Received ye the spirit? the scripture saith, by legal works or by the word of faith. If by the gospel only, then let none dare to be wiser than the wisest one. We must, who freely get, as freely give, the vital word that makes the dead to live. For even to sinners dead within our reach, we in his living name may most successful preach. The Spirit and the Scripture both agree, jointly, says Christ, to testify of me. The preacher, then, will from his text decline that scorns to harmonize with this design. Press mortal duties to the last degree? Why not? But mind, lest we successless be, no light, no hope, no strength for duties spring where Jesus is not prophet, priest, and king. No light to see the way unless he teach. No joyful hope save in his blood we reach. No strength unless his royal arm he stretch. Then from our leading scope how gross we fall if, like his name in every gospel call, we make not him the first, the last, the all. Our office is to bear the radiant torch of gospel light into the darkened porch of human understandings and display the joyful dawn of everlasting day. To draw the golden chariot of free grace, the darkened shades with shining rays to chase, till heaven's bright lamp on circling wheels be hurled with sparkling grandeur round the dusky world, and thus to bring in dying mortal sight new life and immortality to light. We are charged to preach the gospel unconfined to every creature of the human kind, to call with tenders of salvation free all corners of the earth to come and see, and every sinner must excuseless make by urging rich and poor to come and take. Ho, every one that thirsts is grace's call, direct to needy sinners great and small. 
not meaning those alone, whose holy thirst denominates their souls already blessed. If only those were called, then none but saints, nor would the gospel suit the sinner's wants. But here the call does signally import sinners and thirsty souls of every sort, and mainly to their doors the message brings who yet are thirsting after empty things, who spend their means no living bread to buy, and pains for that which cannot satisfy. Such thirsty sinners here invited are, who vainly spend their money, thought, and care, on passing shades, vile lusts, and trash so base, as yields the immortal souls no true solace. The call directs them, as they would be blessed, to choose a purer object of their thirst. All are invited by the joyful sound to drink who need, as does the parched ground, whose wide-mouthed clefts speak to the barren sky its passive thirst without an active cry. The gospel preacher then with holy skill must offer Christ to whosoever will. To sinners of all sorts that can be named, the blind, the lame, the poor, the halt, the maimed, not daring to restrict the extensive call, but opening wide the net to catch them all. No soul must be excluded that will come, nor right of access be confined to some. Though none will come till conscious of their want, yet right to come they have by sovereign grant. Such right to Christ, his promise and his grace, that all are damned who hear and don't embrace. So freely is the unbounded call dispensed. We therein find even sinners unconvinced, who know not they are naked, blind and poor, counseled to buy or beg at Jesus' door, and take the glorious robe, I salve, and golden store. This prize they are obliged by faith to win, else unbelief would never be their sin. Yea, gospel offers but a sham we make, if every sinner has not right to take. Be gospel heralds fortified from this, to trumpet grace, howe'er the serpent hiss. Did hell's malicious mouth in dreadful shape, gainst innocence itself malignant gape, then sacred truth's devoted vouchers may, for dire reproach their measures constant lay. With cruel calumny of old commenced, this sect will everywhere be spoke against. While to and fro he runs the earth across, whose name is Adelphon Catagross. In spite of hell, be then our constant strife to win the glorious lamb a virgin wife.